right. Facebook Live is what Facebook. up, Facebook? Hi, Facebook Live. How's everybody? Oh, you can't actually say anything in the Facebook Live, but you can uh, go in there and start a conversation and say it, and I'll probably see it. Awesome. Yes. Um, what am I doing? Oh, yeah, I'm going on a Facebook Live and sharing it on my page. We want to get as many Facebook Live people as we can on here. Smoking Toast is live now. I like it, and I'm going to share it. And I am hearing your phone. Oh, let me turn that down. I've confused myself now. And share. All right, so sent to Dan. Now I'm going to go to Facebook, uh, Facebook and share the show myself. I am sharing it out there. Smoking and toasting and live. There we are. Smoking and toasting live, baby. And um, share. So sent is that your phone now? That's me. I'm turning it down. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. We're old. We're working this out. Yes. Right. Share. Wait. All right. Share. Wait. Why Comment. Is, why does it, it wants me to share to a group? Hang on. This is not what I'm used to seeing. Okay. Let me just. Uh, okay. I'm not getting this. What's happening here? All right. I am. Posting comments. I'm feeling Facebook illiterate. The, the problem is they keep updating it. You're going to have to work on your facebook attitude. What the hell? I don't want to share to a group. I want to share public. Why can I not? It should be in the bottom left. Yeah. It's share, but then it wants to go write post, copy link. Maybe I'll just write post. Should go down to the top, top, the very top. Check out the show. Boom. All right. Why is it not sharing? This is the least entertaining part oh, of the boy, show. Oh, boy. It totally is. <laughs> so I can write post or I can share to a, invite people or I can share to a group. Why? Oh, we got Dan Crow, Dan Crowell out there watching. Hey, Dan. Hey, Dan. What's up? I see you. so great to see you. I see you're way more Facebook savvy than I am. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm just going to, like, kill Facebook and go back to it. And see if it, uh, see. All right, now I can kill that. All right, so let me just pick it up from the. We need to get a general office thing that everyone saves it or everyone shares at this point in time too. Yes, we do. Okay, gotcha. All right, we are ready. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Facebook Live. Well, 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 well. Welcome, my friends, to this fine radio program known primarily as Smokin' and Toastin', or as we like to say occasionally, Smokin' and Toastin'. It's nice to have you on board with us. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're doing you're doing your NPR persona. Great. He's going to be the yes man for the show. Today's show will be sponsored by the NPR Lean. <laughs> he's back for one show, and now he's like now he's like pulling that on me. Smokin' and Toastin' is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. We are brought to you by B and B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston, and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth. Today is show number seventy four. Ian. What are How we, have we made it this far? I have no idea. <laughs> it just proves you don't have to have a great deal of talent to do a show. You don't have to have a great idea. You just have to have an idea. But I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're not the first to prove that. So, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's not, too, not too bad of a thing. This show is uh, coming from you. We're on Facebook Live. Uh, we are available, of course, uh, downloadable on uh, Apple and uh, Google, Apple Podcasts and uh, Google, Google Play. Play and yeah. you can find us on uh, the video version of this on 
on uh, YouTube, which yep. is pretty cool to do as well. But we welcome all our Facebook livers. We always start Facebook Live a little before we start the show, and so it's kind of fun, you know, getting out there and sharing it. And uh, our special guest today in a segment that we actually uh, recorded yesterday uh, wh- is Dan Crowell of Glen Morangy, and so we'll be uh, bringing that segment to you. Dan is always a great guest and always a lot of what fun to have on and talk about uh, great whiskey. And and so we hit, we were at quite an event yesterday. It was a luncheon that lunch where was they, so good where they launched their new uh, their new Glen Morangy spirit, and this is their special edition number nine called Spios, or as the uh, as the guys from Scotland pronounce it, Spios. Yeah, yes. and so that's why we're smoking. I would do a, I would do a Scottish accent, but I'm so abysmally bad at it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think both of us will try to refrain. I'm going to stick to Southeast Texas. Yep. I'm pretty good at that one. Yep. So we'll be talking about the tasting notes for the new Spios, which the word Spios means spicy, and therefore the show title uh, for show number 74, which is a spicy Glenmorangie. So uh, we'll do that. We'll be tasting some beers, and we'll be talking about uh, tobacco and cigars and uh, just having our, our normal uh, good smoking and toast in time so uh, we're very excited to have you guys on board Ian, we're going to be tasting today the independence shiny diamonds ale from independence brewing in austin a very highly respected austin um uh, craft brewer and this is a seasonal i've so. had quite a few of theirs including their convict hill and mm-hmm. uh, a number of their number mm-hmm. of their uh, beers and they're all outstanding yeah, they're, uh, quality they're, wise they're a very high like quality uh craft brewer so i'm excited i have not tasted the shiny diamonds before so i'm excited about it. and then we've had many founders brews on the show. I love Founders. But we've never done their Centennial IPA, so we'll be doing that today. Uh, Founders based out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. And then I have, uh, I'm sure, in keeping with the Scottish theme, I'm sure I will badly mispronounce this Scottish name, but I believe it is Harvestoon Ola Dub Ale from Scotland. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you trashed think that, but this I have no one, idea how to correct yeah, that. Yeah, I think this is one you're going to enjoy. So, <laughs> no idea yeah. how to correct so, that. So a lot of great things going on. We mentioned the Glenn uh, Morangy event. Uh, it was one of those things where they do a live video feed from Scotland, and then they had a number of different cities. I think the cities represented were Houston, Denver, Toronto, Toronto and, Montreal. and Montreal. And uh, so we were the lucky cities that got to be a part of this to uh, do the early taste of uh, Spios, and we asked... Uh, Dan Crowell, when this will be on the shelf, so he'll tell us that it's soon, but when this will be on the shelf in terms of uh, people wanting to check it out, because uh, I, I I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag. We both kind of liked it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, and here it is. There's the box. I'll show that to the camera. That's uh, Spios. Uh, see, I have to get used to the fact that the camera monitor I'm looking at Left is right and right is left. That's the way Oh, yes, yeah, so, a little backwards. Yes. Yeah, a little backwards. So a lot of things going on. Thompson Cigars, the mail order giant, has been acquired uh, in this you know season of acquisition. So we'll tell you all about that. And uh, I, I've been, you know, I'm going to talk about, when I talk about my cigar, it's yet another Nicaraguan cigar. Seems like I've been smoking a lot of Nicaraguans lately and loving them. And Arturo Fuente, which is one of the, like hardcore Dominican Republic uh, tobacco growers and producers. And even, I mean, they managed to make some of the best Dominican cigars that are out there, the Opus X and, mm-hmm. and, and the, uh, um, the amazing Arturo Fuente line, some of the things, the Hemingway short story we talked about, I think, yeah, last that's week. And, such a good and, and some of those. Well, they are opening a new factory, guess where? Nicaragua. Nicaragua. So that's going to be interesting. We'll tell you about that. Uh, and we'll also tell you what state produces the most craft beer. So you may oh, wonder about that. Uh, and, and if you're an investor, there's a new whiskey fund that has come out in Sweden where you can actually invest in whiskeys. A whiskey GoFundMe? A whiskey GoFundMe. Yeah, no, this is legitimate. It's being traded on the Swedish Stock Exchange. So Nice. So you can actually do that. So we have all of those things coming up and a very, I think, a very exciting show. We love Dan Crowell. We've had him on the show before. So the segment with him, I think, will be a lot of fun. And we have a lot of good tasting to go on. But, uh, but first and foremost, Ian... Did you smoke anything interesting this I week? I did. And actually, firster and foremoster, yes. I would simply like to uh, explain. We started a little bit late today, and I get mm-hmm. that. That's my fault. I uh, brought the interview on my iPad home, mm-hmm. and then I neglected to actually bring it 
Which is important for us to be able to play. Yes, back. yes. So. <laughs> the studio today. So as we speak, my wife is actually at the door. She ran all the way back to the house and got she's the awesome. iPad for me. Yeah, because she's and, awesome. And uh, and is now actually standing at the door, uh, waiting to bring it in so that we can plug it in and play it for you in just a little bit. But yes, the answer is I did smoke something interesting yesterday. I um. So I talked last week about getting a little bit uh, information paralyzed when I open up my a humidor now because there's so many different cigars right you know it's easy when you have like a box of this and a box of that in there you know mm-hmm. 20 of these or 20 of those you just go hum i want one of those. i want this or that right right but when you have you know 100 cigars in there and they're all different it's hard to uh, select one but i did yesterday just for fun I, my I, heart bleeds by the way <laughs> <right>? <laughs> i actually uh, um i actually went Outside my normal box. Oh, you went uh, out of your comfort zone, did I you? I did. I grabbed um, a La Polina. It's called a, um, a Fuego Verde. It, refresh my memory, but isn't that a Candela? Isn't that the green wrapper? It is. Oh. This is a Candela. This is a green wrapper. It's so that is so outside different. your comfort zone. And this yes. is funny because I've had Candelas before. It's So first off, they're interesting because it's a green cigar. Right, it, it, because like, the wrapper leaf is green. It's just and green not, it's is not, all get out. It's not dyed green. That's no, its natural it's color. It's just yeah. green. It's a perfect St. Patrick's and, Day smoke. That's right. Mm-hmm. And it, look, well, they obviously they sell more of those during St. Patrick's Day than they ever do. And it's not as popular a cigar as it once was. I'll actually read a little bit off of a uh, half wheel in a moment here about that. Um, but this was a really fun. I was so surprised at how good this cigar was. I've had Candela's that were, they tasted kind of green, to be frank with you. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. eh, I was going to say, I haven't That's had a, many that I've really liked that much. Yeah, to me, some of them have almost kind of a soapy or a green kind mm-hmm. of young flavor. Very or, young, yep. Or whatever. I don't I don't really know how to describe it, but <clears> not, not always my favorite. But I got these at the Big Smoke. Um, and I had two of them in there, and so I said, you know what, I'm going to have one of these, and I enjoyed it from head to toe. It really? was so good. Yeah. I'm going to read a little bit about this. So the pricing is seven fifty per cigar, one hundred fifty for a box of twenty. Okay, it was a limited production. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be out of you know right. production, or if it's already just done and it's not available. I don't really know. Candela, I'm reading this off a of half wheel right now. Here we go. Candela is a process which occurs. Uh, where curing barns are heated to as much as 165 to 170 degrees to process the wrappers in a different manner. While most tobacco is picked and then hung to dry, slowly changing from green to brown under normal conditions, candela is a shorter process where temperature is increased, sucking the moisture out of the leaves while preserving the green color. Right. So, so this is why yeah, it stays shorter green. Shorter process yeah. hasn't turned brown yet. Right, because as strange as it seems, you know, we don't go out to a to a fresh tobacco leaf and it's not brown. It's not brown. No, you're, you're absolutely Even right. Even though we're so used to seeing cigars that so way, it's using, green. So by using the higher temperature, they draw the moisture out of the leaf Quicker, faster right. before the leaf turns brown. It keeps the color. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then they also uh, go on to say, while they've fallen out of favor... Candela cigars were once the most popular type of cigar sold in the United States. I mm. didn't actually know that. I didn't either. That's pretty interesting. Some companies still sell Candela cigars year-round, though most Candela cigars are sold in the U.S. only around St. Patrick's Day holiday. <laughs> yeah, Go right figure that. that. Yeah. So this cigar started off, it was very uh, light to medium in flavor. Um, and, and not in flavor, but in uh, in, in impact. It was, uh, it was not a big, heavy smoke it was actually kind of on the lighter side to maybe medium um the smoke was fantastic the smoke was big and silky it was delicious the uh the burn on this thing was amazing it was a little mm-hmm. bit softer cigar than i'm used to feeling like just the firmness of the cigar itself it was a little but softer. it burned properly it burned properly it burned great i never tended the cigar um it went out at about the third third and that was my fault i was grilling at the time so i got distracted it went out at the third <laughs> third and uh and i did a relight on it with zero penalty That's zero great. Less than almost any other one. Yeah, wow. it it fired right up. And I smoked it down to, you know, I definitely got my money's worth out of it. I'm going to give this cigar definite right at the 5 of 5. It's $7.50. I enjoyed that $7.50 worth. At the price I got it for at the big uh, smoke, yeah. Oh, it's that. Then then it hits like eight it's, or nine because I got it for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you didn't really get not really good for free. Yeah, You're still paying, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> when you factor yeah. it in, it actually costs three times that much. But anyway, um, but I, I really did enjoy a cigar. It was a lot of fun. That that's great, and I love when you try something different and and you really do wind up enjoying right. it. You know, right. it's like uh, you know, and uh, in a way the. The scotch that we're going to talk about today, the Glenmorangie, this is a very different style 
uh, whiskey for these guys Complete because it's, from yeah, what they usually generally Usually the whole thing about Glen Morangy is how how smooth and and smooth, almost buttery, buttery. Yeah. silky. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, those uh, are all Glen Morangy. In in whatever age, uh, mm-hmm. you know. And so this one is not quite I mean it is smooth, but it's got it's got a bite to it, a kick to it that some of the Glen Morangies don't always have. So we'll talk about that uh, coming up. Plus I'll tell you I smoked a very interesting cigar this week. Uh, it was a Don Pepin Garcia Series JJ. I love those. Yeah, and so I'll talk about that coming up in the next segment. Plus, we'll do our first uh, beer tasting, some independent shiny diamonds ale. And don't forget, our uh, our uh, talk with Dan Crowell of, of Glen Morangie is coming up. This is Smoking and Toasting. Welcome to the show, my friends. All right, let's look away from the door. And get yes, the thank you, Tiffany. Right, so you'll have, we'll go ahead and do another segment before we try for Dan Crowell. So. You're so awesome. Thank you. Man. You are on camera right now. Yes. <laughs> Say hi to Facebook Live. <laughs> he and his wife, Tiffany, ladies and gentlemen, saving the day. We're on that camera right there. Oh, we're, all, oh, we're all back here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wonderful, wonderful. So here you go. Yep, so we'll hand that off. Facebook Live, thanks for your patience. Same as it ever was. Woohoo! Videos. There you go, it's 2340. 2340. Now we need to chop the front end of that off a little bit, right? Uh. I don't know how much, yeah, how far we need to go into it. I know I said, I, is, is I guess he said we were rolling, and I just said, welcome welcome back to Smoking the Toast, and I started the segment, so. Can you, can you scroll it up and then start at a specific point? If not, he can just start it, because we'll introduce the segment. He can start it and then go, um, when, he hears, when we hear welcome back to Smoking the Toast, and we'll know. Bring it up, so that's all right. We'll take a moment to figure it out. If I sit over there, will I be out of the way? I think on that in that chair you will. Yes. Yes. If you stand okay. in the corner. Uh, so Facebook Live, what up? Let me entertain <laughs> you. Uh, oh, the shark bites with oh, his teeth, crap. yeah, and he keeps them <laughs> pearly white. <laughs> oh, the shark bites. Old Steve Martin bit. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, Facebook Live, you're going to love this show, I promise. It's that good. Oh. The best beer in America. No, okay, don't worry about it. According to Beer Connoisseur, we'll share that with you coming up. Awesome. I think that's an empty. I think that's a one that's been uh, trashed. So we'll go. That's a broken <laughs> one, but I can... <laughs> Look, that was that was like one of those James Harden shots where it that looks like nice. he's got it, except it bounces like inside the rim and then out. That's what happened. Right. Shot. So. James Harden scored 60 points the other night. Unbelievable. And huh? had a triple-double. The first player ever to do 60 and a triple-double. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That guy is pretty amazing. Yeah, he's. I, I think he's got a future in uh, basketball. What do you think? He should think about being professional. <laughs> he should go pro. Okay, so we are okay to go ahead and start segment two. Uh, and you can uh, work on try to figure that uh, stuff out also while we're doing segment two. So uh, they really don't tell me much about Shiny Diamond's Ale on here. doesn't have one of those, this ale was crafted with the, you know. All so, right, you so handle gonna... the can. I will look it up on the uh, right. interwebs. Wonderful. Shiny Diamond. Mm-hmm. So I'll open talking about the cigar, and then we'll move to the beer. Shiny <clears throat> Diamond's Ale. Apparently Thank I'm you. not the only one to search for. Thank you for your patience, Facebook Live. We're dealing with some extra technical stuff this week, so. All right, here we go. Segment dos. What was it Chuck Willer used to say? We'll be back in two and two. (laughs) Don't you 
just love the echo on that snare. That's so well recorded, isn't it? It's a lot of reverb. Smug and toast, and it is so nice to have you guys joining us for show number 74. Ian, we didn't mention, well, that means that next week's show is number 75, and I think we have to do that's our something, Jubilee, right? something special, don't we? That's that's like Jubilee of some I've got sort. an idea. What do they call the 75th? Let's taste a bunch Silver of... Silver Jubilee? Yeah. Let's taste a bunch of beers and maybe a spirit or two. I think I'm on to something. Dave. I think you're on. I think you have an idea. Maybe we could turn it into a podcast and talk about Maybe it. Maybe we should. Maybe we should. We'll even smoke a cigar. I do want to say uh, my Red Solo Cup campaign has gone exactly nowhere so far. So just in case you guys are wondering, I have decided that the Red Solo Cup, it doesn't have to be red, actually. Maybe I'll get some different colors. But the Solo Cup needs to sponsor us. And I'm going to keep talking about them until I get their attention. Well, you know, we do have a great sponsor, B&B Butchers and Restaurant at uh, 1814. Oh, don't we all? <laughs> 1814 Washington Ave in Houston. And uh, they're also available in Fort Worth now. And the uh, shops at Clear Fork. And, uh, I mean, we, we do love them. They make great food. They have a great outdoor smoking area. We have smoked many cigars there, you and I. Yes. And tasted some fine whiskey as well from their amazing bar. I mean, they have one of the most uh, well-curated bar selections of any place I've seen. They're just They're not one of those places that has just seven gazillion bottles. No. But they're a place that is so well-curated. The bottles they have, it's like, oh, yeah. It's kind of like anybody can make you a playlist with like hundreds of songs on it, but if somebody makes you a playlist mm-hmm. with 20 songs and they're all just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, right. You know, and that's it. So they have more than 20 bottles, of course, but you, <laughs> you understand what I'm getting at. Hey, uh, speaking of, uh, speaking of uh, you know, curation and, and uh, your, your high number of uh, cigars in your humidor that you mentioned, uh, a high do. number of different cigars. Uh, I smoked one that I actually had not smoked before. It was a uh, Don Pepin Garcia Series JJ Bellicoso. And I've had many of the Don Pepin Garcia cigars. I've had the My Father cigars. And uh, I was looking for one, actually was at uh, Casa de Monte Cristo in uh, Houston. And was looking for one I hadn't tried yet. And there it was. And I believe that this is one that I may have talked about before, though, where it was the father and son, Don Pepin mm-hmm. Garcia and Jaime, his son, blended this together. I think that that's what it was. A really pretty cigar. Uh, it was a Nicaraguan Corojo wrapper with Corojo and Criollo I, I, white people say Criollo, but I think it's Criollo is how you're supposed to say I think it's it. actually Cirillo. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now, I, had, I probably I messed that wrong. up a little bit, but it's closer right. to that. Right. Well, they're all from Nicaragua, which, whichever way you go. And uh, I've been, I mentioned this before, I've been really stuck on Nicaraguan cigars lately. They've been some of my very, very favorites that I've had. And uh, this was... Um, well, the pre-light, rich, earthy, some nuttiness. I loved it from the very beginning. It lit up nicely, gave me flavors of earth and leather and dark chocolate. And I'd read some reviews that indicated that they'd had some construction issues with this cigar. Mine burned like a champ, so no complaints on, on my end. It was toasty and wonderful, medium to full, like most of the Nicaraguan cigars that I like. I was pretty impressed. It's about an eight dollar cigar. I'll give it a yeah, I'll give it a five and a half. Maybe got just a little more out of it than what I thought the price, you know, uh, uh, would would indicate. And just for those of you who aren't familiar with our price to quality scale, a cigar that scores a five means you got exactly what you paid for. If it was a $10 cigar, it smoked like a $10 cigar. If it was a $5 cigar, it smoked like a $5 cigar. And in this case, it was an 8 I think it... I wouldn't have been upset had I paid 10 or $11 for this cigar. So so I'll give it a, I'll give it a five and a half. Um, but you know, that's one of the reasons we don't hand out a lot of tens, because ten would be right. like ten would be like, okay, I smoked a two dollar cigar and it was like it smoked like a twenty dollar cigar right. or something. That would that would be a ten, you know? <laughs> I don't know if we've I don't know if we've achieved that yet. But we've gotten close. So we've gotten uh, close. what is the highest? I think I've given an eight before I think I? Yeah, I think I've been at the eight range as yeah. well, but that was something mm-hmm. I don't even remember which one it was. We have to go back and start making a flow chart on this stuff. Yeah, you know, one of the things I love about this show is that we, you know, we we spare no expense when it comes to sound effects. For example, if you wanted a sound effect of a falling bomb, 
I mean, again, we've spared no expense. I, dude, I felt like I was in the middle of that. You, you did. You <laughs> you really get right like, in the war movie. Really... Like, like the hell with all this Dolby and, and the seat rattling underneath you Enemy and all that. at the gates. I was in yeah, the middle of it yeah, right there. Yeah. So, so once again, <laughs> one of my favorite things to do is to create our own sound effects. And here's one of my favorites. Are you ready? That is a beautiful sound effect. Isn't oh, there, yeah. See, yeah. I like see? the hesitation. You like and the, the delay? Anticipation you like the going delay? on. Uh, We're going to be trying an Independence Brewing Company, Shiny Diamonds Ale. Now, Independence is out of Austin. And these guys, I mean, they really they really have it going on. And I will tell you that I, I enjoy so many of their beers. You mentioned you tried a number of their beers, didn't you, Ian? Independence, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I've I've tried the Convict Hill. They have a bunch of other ones. Convict Hill's the one that sticks in my head. Mm -hmm. um, but they have, yeah, they have quite a number of of uh, beers. To try. Adam, I poured one for you as well. I didn't know uh, whether you were joining uh, joining us today or not. But uh, uh, so this one, I can tell you already, just from looking at it, this is a very uh, sort of amber straw color. It looks like it's got, um, you know, a little bit of. Uh, I won't say haze to it, but it's not like completely clear, mm -hmm. like a like a Miller Lite would be, for example. It's 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 about that same color, but it's got oh, it's got a lot of flavor on the nose. This is very interesting. I think that this could be one of those uh, one of those amber type ales that that delivers high on the flavor. I haven't haven't sipped it yet, but uh, mm. all right, let's give lots it a try. of hops. Mm hmm. Mm. Lots of citrus. Wow, it almost drinks a bit like a session IPA. It it's got a little of that citrus uh, after um, uh, on, on the finish, like it's like it's got some really. Uh, I don't know what, what what are you detecting? It not a lot of maltiness, but definitely very sessionable. It's uh, um it's got enough malt up front to make it interesting. Mm -hmm. It finishes super quick and a little bit sweet, which is interesting. Yeah, and almost, a little citrus tang to the end of it. The citrus is what is making me think towards the IPA. It doesn't really have the same hoppiness as uh, an IPA, although I, I I recognize that hops is where the citrus comes from. But it's interesting because it smells very hoppy. Yes. Like in it fact, smells, smells very hoppy right up front. Smells hoppier than it tastes, mm. actually. But it, it drinks more like an IPA or a pale ale than an almost amber, like a cream ale, which is what I was thinking. It, yes, I it's it's very smooth, very smooth and very good. Um, I'd say it's very refreshing. Now I understand it's a seasonal, and I bought this very recently at Specs, but I don't know what season this is for. If it is. A summer ale, or it's got to uh, be for spring. At maybe this for point. spring. Yeah, I, I bet that's why. Because now that it's January, of course, all the spring ales are beginning to come out. Well, if you <laughs> if you live in Houston like we do, it starts getting hot. That's true. In fact, I was running the air conditioner on my way back from the Glen Morangy event yesterday <laughs> in the car, going, "Come on, come on!" Yeah, it gets, uh, so. it gets pretty warm in the sun <laughs> even now. Wow! Like the temperature may say sixty five degrees, but your car gets much hotter. Well, this is uh, this is quite good. I I think that I like this, and I would buy this uh, on a regular basis if it if it's around. I would call that a pretty sessionable ale, definitely. I I really like the guys from Independence, and that's uh, that's somebody we should look into trying that's, to have um, on the show. That follows a profile that I really enjoy. It, you know, you can call it an. IPA or you call it an ale, but it's it's got enough hops to make it crisp and interesting. But it finishes in a way that doesn't leave it bitter, and that makes it very sessionable. We're also going to be uh, trying a Founders Centennial IPA and the uh, the Ola Dub Ale from Scotland, which I, I'm looking forward. Dub, by the way, is spelled D U B H. Dub. 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 So we have to we have to look look for that. That's going to be interesting, and of course we'll be uh, bringing you our segment uh, with Dan Crow from Glen uh coming up. But I do want to tell you about a way that you can now invest in whiskey, and it's, I don't mean like buying a bottle and keeping it at your house and hoping it becomes more valuable. You can now buy into the world's first publicly traded whiskey investment fund. Oh. It's called the Single Malt Fund. And it's a unique investment opportunity where investors can opt to own a small part of a large collection of rare and limited edition whiskeys. And unlike similar funds that invest in whiskey companies, this one invests in the actual liquid itself. In the actual uh -huh. liquid. Okay. So it's so it's it's kind of like 
investing in a bottle that you bring home and hope it becomes worth more and more. But it's it's done by experts that you know kind of have a feel, just like a fund manager has a feel for certain funds. Mm-hmm. These guys have a feel for what's going to be uh, valuable. Instead of gold, we buy liquid gold. That's uh, the, that's the uh, <laughs> nice, nice that's the quote from Christian Svantesson, who is the fund's founder and CEO. Uh, at first, first glance, he says it may sound. A bit absurd, but whiskey's actually been a pretty decent investment in recent years. Over the past decade, the return on rare whiskeys has been about 25%. 25% over 10 years? Not too bad. That seems pretty good. The world's 100 most valuable whiskeys have gone up in value 447% since 2010. So the single malt fund has a target return rate of 10%, which is a pretty conservative estimate. Now, this is from Sweden, so it'll be listed on the NGM, which is the Nordic Growth Market, which is their equivalent of like the uh, uh, of the stock exchange mm-hmm. here, of like uh, NASDAQ or something. Uh, and it will liquidate after six years. Investors will also have the opportunity to buy bottles from the fund's inventory online. Now, here's where it gets interesting, right? Because right? you can actually buy some of these bottles. And uh, uh, of course, I don't have anywhere near the money it would take to uh, get involved in any of this. But but you're essentially buying from yourself indirectly when you do this because you're a part owner of the fund. Uh, early responses to the fund have been pretty positive, and uh, Business Insider did a piece on them, and uh, Svan Tessen calls early investors cautiously cheerful <laughs> cautiously cheerful well of course nice. they are they're investing in they're investing in uh, great whiskey so uh, what i'm interested to know though is is like how they go about getting their hands on them because unlike a fund where you're investing in the company so you're buying stock they're actually investing in the, the actual bottles, which means they've got to get their hands on some of these rare whiskeys. Right. So we'll have to talk with Chris Hart and see how do you like, how do you get your hands on a really rare whiskey? There's a whole the there's a whole bunch of people out there that do that, and I, I don't understand the process myself. Maybe we need to get someone on here to explain it. Well, and that would be a good thing for us to do. So we'll do that in a future show. All right, you're listening to Smoking and Toasting. This is the radio program that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. Our next segment will deal with fine spirits specifically because we'll be welcoming in our good friend Mr. Dan Crowell from Glen Morangy and he will be telling us all about the spicy Glen Morangy the Spios, Spios or as we like to say Spios Spios Miss Tiffany might like to taste that the Spios uh, no she's oh, the, the ale, ale. Do. I'm gonna run into the restroom and get a. Uh... Thank you. Yes, yes. All right. So, because I start this segment saying "Welcome back," I don't think we have to do any intro for this. Segment. I think we can just start the segment and start the clock. I just figured out how to get it on. The <laughs> okay. I, like, just found this. Uh, oh, good. I, I'm happy to look at this one because <coughs> it was okay. ha- having trouble connecting. Mm. Thank you for handling that. Everything cool with the video switching in that segment? Yeah, everything was fine. Cool. Yeah, I think they did a fine job with this little, uh, this little shiny diamonds ale. There you go, Facebook Live. There's the shiny diamonds ale can. Thank you, Adam. So you can know what that looks like. Mm. All right, while you work on that, Adam, I'm going to go to the boys' room. Facebook Live, we'll be right back with the interview, I promise. Ha, <laughs> 
I guess we left the Facebook audience with nothing, huh? Nothing. Hey guys, I'm back. Had to take, uh, in the world of geeks, what they would say, a bio break. <laughs> Adam knows what that means. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that just basically means I had to pee. That's all. Did I say that? Make that sound nicer. All right. I'd like to thank my wife for bringing um, the iPad to make that happen. Is it happening? It's, it's getting there. Was fantastic. I had the uh, Philly cheesesteak sandwich, which was full of actual steak. And not sliced really thin either. It was quite delicious. Are you entertaining Facebook Live right now? I am. I'm just rambling on, <laughs> <laughs> as I want to do. As he's want to do. Normally, I just talk about guitars, but today I'm talking about the food at the Federal Grove. The oysters we oh, got, the fried the oysters, oysters for fantastic. the appetizer. Whatever that sauce was, so was they had. Oh, oh yeah. It was so wonderful. good. So good. Yeah. The Federal Grill on uh, Shepherd. On Shepherd, yeah. In Houston. And it was formerly a Highly pool hall that I'd been to quite a number of mm -hmm. times, and I can't think of the name of it uh, years ago, but it was. So uh, but it, they've changed it all. It's, it's a very nice place. So it's uploading the program. So we're about to, about to see our segment with Dan Crowell, who we love. Are we doing that as this segment right now? Yeah, we're going to do that okay. as this we're segment. Do that right away? Awesome. So this is about 20 minutes long, we said? The, the, 23. So we'll come back to a very short. Actually, no. We'll just do a. We'll only do four segments. We'll do a longer, a slightly longer. Longer third. Uh, and then we'll finish fifth, it Fifth, basically. Because then one and two, this will be like three and four. And then we'll do a fifth. That looked about half, by the way. Uh, cover up that label there. Yeah. Which On label? this side. Oh, yes. <laughs> Some labels don't need to be seen. There we go. <laughs> Spios. Isn't that a beautiful bottle? It is good. Well, all that. the Glimmerangy bottles are so yeah. They have that nice, beautifully felt sculpted. Yes, thing on it. Mm hmm. Beautifully, beautifully sculpted. Okay, I say just let it roll. Facebook Live. Here comes our let interview, and uh, Dan Crowell is wonderful, and this Spios is wonderful. You will hear it through the headphones. Yep. And I yeah. think we yeah. can. By we. Federal right. American Grill. Federal American Grill. The Federal American Grill. The Federal American Grill. The Federal American Grill. Federal American Grill. The 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 Federal uh, Ian, this guy's no stranger to the show, uh, Dan Crow from Glen Morgan, you bet. Hello, thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's, uh, so this is Spios, is the name of this new iteration of Glen Morgan, right? Correct, yes. And so we'll get into what that's all about in a moment, but I was almost shocked to learn this is your ninth special yes. uh, edition. Yep. So how long do the special editions last? If I fall in love with this, uh -huh. how long can I get it? Typically, but well, depends a little bit on what market you're in. You're in a favorable market. Uh, a lot of cases come to Texas, obviously, so uh, uh, you're going to be okay for a little while. Now, there is some mitigating circumstances with this one in particular. Uh, the advance rating from Jim Murray's whiskey bottle is a 95 and a half, so that's going to have some impact on its volatility. It's going to mean that it's, this sells quickly. It'll go so, yeah, pretty right. quickly. I imagine if I had to speculate, you'd probably have through June or so where you'd still see some of the shop, and then you'll start to definitely take off. So what was last year's special edition? Last year's special edition was Bacalta. Uh, Bacalta. So what we did with Bacalta was a sort of a retooling and revisiting of what we used to call the Morgan Madeira Wood Finish that was discontinued in 2006 mm -hmm. or seven. Uh, and so uh, Dr. Bill, who you just met through uh, the magic of Google Hangout, um, he uh, didn't necessarily want to stop making what we'd called the Morgan Madeira Wood Finish. It was just that the supply of quality Madeira oak could not support a global release on a yearly basis. So in the back of his head was, 
I'm going to go back to that one more time and I'm going to crush it. And then, we're, and then we'll walk away with our hands. You know, the Nero is quite that. good. I have a bottle of that. And the, do, you oh, have, delicious. do you have any bottles of that stashed away? I do. Yes. Uh, for each one of these prime editions. I certainly do. Yeah, so they and hide it. You're invited over on. <laughs> <laughs> but you can make it to my house in Omaha, Nebraska. You can stop by and we'll get you done. You surprised what we do for whiskey. Right yeah, on. You're, you're welcome. welcome. Yeah, I immediately, immediately, even immediately, Omaha, <laughs> immediately fucked over it. Immediately. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so every year it's been a different special edition. Yes. But these have had to have been planned Longer. quite some time ago, right? right. Because the whiskey's got to age and mature in whatever cast uh, right. it's maturing in. And so how long ago, I, I, I know you're not putting a year on Spears, but how long ago did this get started, give or take? Well, um, Bill had mentioned in the, in the presentation that the inspiration from it came, uh, for it, came from the late great beer and Spears, a writer Michael Jackson. Uh, and that would have happened in about 1995. Uh, after that, it, it was, uh, from, from what I gathered from Bill, it was a 10 to 12 year process of getting, to, uh, uh, tweaking the concept and getting the cast in, in line. And so this would have happened in uh, probably late uh, 2000s, uh, where we would have gone into cast. Of course, you know, we can't say for sure, uh, it's just not any of whiskey, but that's, there's your timeline, sort of, what you're looking at. Well, there. and backing up a little bit, because we were at this presentation, so we have all this information. But for our audiences who weren't there with us, um, this is uh, matured in a rye cast. Right. And at the time of uh, conception for this, I mean, now we can get rye anywhere. There's a big rye explosion, if you will. It wasn't quite as big back in the late Rye, 90s, back in the 90s, it was a very, very, very small percentage of, uh, of the entire whiskey uh, uh, catalog. So uh, just finding rye barrels at that point in time would have been uh, a very uphill battle. Right. right. And, uh, you, uh, so that had to be inspired. It was, uh, you know, uh, the conversation between um, uh, Michael Jackson and Dr. Bill would have been enlightening to Dr. Bill because, I, and, and he'd mentioned this in the presentation as well, uh, that the access uh, of uh, straight American rye whiskey in, in the UK would have been nearly non existent. So it wouldn't have necessarily pinged his radar quite as early in the game as it did because of Michael Jackson. Right. So, not the pop artist, my right? Friend. Yeah, the 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 the, the dearly departed uh, beer and spirits writer, uh, that Michael Jackson, uh, Michael Jackson, whiskey bible fame. Uh, so, he, uh, Bill had mentioned in the presentation that he has a debt of gratitude to uh, to Michael for bringing this whole idea sort of into the, into his head. I, I wonder. It was a great presentation you had with those guys. It was a Google Hangout presentation, and they were. Uh, obviously in uh, Scotland. I don't know if that was in the uh, distillery or where they Actually, were or not. it was the whiskey creation team uh, sort of headquarters there in Edinburgh. Uh, so that was one of the rooms at uh, the morning company in Edinburgh. So it was great, uh, you know, doing the tasting, listening to these guys talk as passionately as they do about the whiskey. And it just made me wonder with, you know, it was a little hard to tell, like, who the favorite son is, like, as they were uh, talking about the different iterations of Glen Morangy, like it, it makes me wonder what if they actually like the best? Like what are they the proudest of? Yep. Is it the thirty year? Is it you know, is it something <laughs> like Spios? you know, what what is it that makes them go, That is my finest creation, do you know? Right. Well, at least with the private editions, which would have been launched back in of course nine years ago with um, uh, Sinalta PX Glen Morangy, Sinalta PX PX was the first private edition launch. Uh, that was, of course, before Brendan McCarran was with the company. So if you were to ask Bill, and I think the question got asked during the presentation, it was Artane, uh, uh, private edition number three, which had an extended finish in Sasakaya oak. So that, I think, historically has been Bill's favorite to drink. Um, I think he's very proud of all of them, but I think if he had to go and pick one private edition to sit and just drink recreationally, it'd be Artane. Uh, for Brendan, however, um, one of his first projects when he came on board uh, was Milsha. Uh, so I imagine that that's still pretty near and dear to his heart in terms of how that came together. I guess it is a bit like asking who's your favorite child, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because yes. you put so much into the creation and the nurturing, if you will, of right. each of these uh, iterations. Um, so uh, the um, is the La Santa and the uh, King de Raban and the uh, Nectar, those, those are all part of that same 
those are part of the core range. So those, range. those happen all and the time. And those are all the time. And those are always available. Because I know yeah. last time we talked to you, we had the La Santa and the Yo, and that's just one of my absolute favorites. Yeah. 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 And by the way, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, just finished my model. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> we noticed. <laughs> right. Uh, but that's one, yeah, that's one I keep on the shelf. Well, we had some pretty spectacular cigars that way at that day as well. Yes, we along with some really spectacular did. beers. Speaking of which, Look at you go. Oh, 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 nice. oh, oh look, look at you. you sir. That's going to go well with your chair. That's a new real test, so thank you yes, very much for that. That's awesome. That and nice. since you're traveling, it's a two boat. Hey, that's great. Yes, yeah, that should survive the CSA. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, <laughs> I'm guessing that because of the spiciness, and spios is a word that actually means spicy or spice. Yeah, spice right? or spicy. It's got spice yeah, or spice. Right. Okay, so, so it is by its nature a Spicier than normal, I guess, uh, 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 for especially for a single bomb, right? I think that's safe to say. Well, particularly for Glamour, just single bomb. Right. So, so, yeah, I think that's So, safe. I'm thinking that's something that's going to hold up rather well to cigars, even something that might have a little more heft to it because yeah, would, of the spiciness. Of I would wear with the flavor profile, with the flavor, flavor profile, the flavor profile on this, I would probably start and in going into uh, Maduro range. Mm -hmm. Rather than the, uh, the lighter side of cigars, mm -hmm. which with with like we did a tasting last time, we did the uh, the original and we had the uh, Perdomo 10th anniversary champagne, which I think is a great pairing, which is mm -hmm. fantastic. But I would probably go with this flavor profile into the into more of a Maduro, something with a little more medium body to it. Does does it feel a little strange to be the and be coming with such a spicy and bold uh, whiskey because the Morgie is more classically known for that just really clean, buttery, really silky. buttery, silky, smooth, and, and I love that. Right. But yet, I love, I love this too, but it's a completely different, it's as different as anything I've tried in your life. I, you know, I agree with you there, and uh, I'm glad that we tried it, and just to lay some context out, we did try it during the presentation with both original and the Morgie Nectar Door. So the Sauterne finished version of Lamorgi in the core range. Mm -hmm. We did that, uh, you know, according to those guys, and I see their wisdom. We did that because Nectar Door does ramp the spicy up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So those final two years are done in toasted French oak freaks that add uh, white Bordeaux dessert wine in them. And as Bill, this is one of those things, every time I do this uh, with those guys, I learned something new. And that, that something new nugget that happened this time was but Dr. Bill and Brennan both prefer the ex Sauterne Bariques to have been used for two to three vintages in Bordeaux before they get them. To take a little bit of the aggression out of that French oak, mm -hmm. a little bit of the spiciness out. So when we had nectar, it had a mid palate, tingly, but clean spice to it. Right. This is, again, a step forward even from there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it is a branching out for us for sure. I will say during the presentation, after they had a sample of the Spios, um, I then went back. And had a sip of the original. Mm -hmm. and Toronto and it was uh, Montreal and Houston, different cities that Denver. Were doing right. this event. Yeah, it was, and that was actually pretty cool. And then they'd come to us and, and ask different questions, and that was a blast. But one of the other cool things I found about this is, uh, you know, a lot of places they just put down uh, a pamphlet and say, "Hey, here's your here's your flavor profile. Here's your uh, tasting notes on this. Mm -hmm. This right here, if you can see this in the video, this is the tasting notes." Yeah. That's this the is actual brilliant. things that those things that you're looking for. This is brilliant. Yeah, this is um, this was actually in the middle of this, but I moved it so it wouldn't be you know covering my whole face. But uh, that this represents your floral scents. You have all your all your grains. All your they have the cinnamon, the yep. cherry. The uh, this is actually chili infused chocolate. Right. Um, Which was delicious. Yes, which is absolutely delicious. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. And the um, and the. Cherries and cherries. Yeah. all this and, and the macadamia nuts. This was such an interesting way to do it because you can smell this and then go right back to your whiskey and and pick up those scents really nicely. Right. Well, I would say it was very you, good. Yeah, you me begin, too. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. You begin to pull some of the spiciness and some of those flavors that Ian just mentioned really just on the first note. The first time you put your nose in this, you can tell uh, that it's going to be a little bit different tasting uh, uh, whiskey than. Uh, particularly than the other Glen Morgans that you yes. that you've had before. Absolutely. Um, um, how how long ago did you get to taste this one for the first time? Um, they sent me a, a few bottles. Uh, I actually got a, a random little airline version of it in, in a, a padded envelope mm -hmm. at my house about a, about three weeks ago. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, that was gone almost immediately. So this is new for you too. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. So this has been, uh, I've been still trying to build not just my vernacular, but my relationship with it in terms of what do I prefer? Would I rather have it oxidized for 20, 30 minutes? Would I rather add water to it? Uh, you know, building my own set of tasting notes that's not necessarily irrespective of what Bill and Brendan have to say about it, but not dependent on it either, mm -hmm. right. to try to reinforce the idea that everybody's experience with this whiskey is gonna be unique to them. And so there's gotta be some, and it's, it's wide open for interpretation across the board. It's that kind of whiskey, and I think it's going to go down differently for just about everyone that tries it. And I really cannot wait to try it with a cigar. I'm what, so excited. One it. thing they didn't mention about this, they talked about so many tasting notes and the enunciation thereof. That was a that was a theme throughout there, by the way. It was pretty funny. That was hilarious. Um, is uh, uh, this the um, this has that snap that the rye whiskey has? Mm -hmm. There's a little sharpness to the, especially the finish on it. Right. The rye whiskey has that you don't get with any other whiskey. Mm -hmm. Corn whiskey almost almost has that, but it's not quite the same. But the rye is very distinctive, and this actually captured that and blended it so well with the original distillate. It's, it's pretty amazing. So you get that snap, that, that aggressiveness and spice, but tempered with that buttery, smooth, silky feel overall that you expect from Glen Orange. It right? certainly is a Glen Orange. Like, Such a it, it, it really is. Because you, you do get, despite the spice and the way it plays on your tongue and on kind of the top of your palate, you get that smoothness across the yeah. back of your tongue and as it goes down. And that's one thing that, that I found really refreshing about it because I, I am a fan of spicier flavors, but sometimes I'm not as much a fan of stuff that burns you so much when it goes right, down right, right. that it doesn't make you want to reach for that next sip for a moment. You know what I mean? Right. And Absolutely. this, this I felt like went down just as smoothly as yeah. the original or the nectar, uh, and it, and but yet that spice just kept tingling on my tongue. Well, I love something that leaves the finish. Um, not burning, but with enough interest to make you go, well, what's that little thing that I'm tasting? Right. I want to try right. another sip. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a beautiful thing. And then I will say that opening it up, and I I uh, did this before when we did the first tasting, started with it just neat, and then went with a few drops of water, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it almost, it almost just changes the flavor profile. It's so, it, it more dramatic than some whiskeys with a few drops of water, I thought. I'm, I'm um, really the spice is there, but it kind of moves to a different place on your tongue, yep. and then you just begin to pull in all these other flavors, like Edith was mentioning, the macadamia nuts, and those kind of things come through a lot more strongly with a couple of drops of water. So I recommend it uh, with a little water. It's a beautiful thing. Um, uh, one way to try, and then what I, one of the ways I love to do this uh, is, is a cube, or sometimes two, depending on how much you have, for sure. of ice. And I like to try it right when you put the ice in there, because you get those initial flavors, those mm -hmm. tasting and neat kind of flavors. Mm -hmm. Then I like to taste it through the whole profile, just hold it with my hand. Like a lot of people pick that up just by the stem, and I like to hold it by my hand, let that sure. ice melt in there and taste it through the entire rye. As that, rye. As so that going uh, from cold, yeah. where you get those bright, fruity flavors, to warming up where you get those deeper, darker flavors, more of the cinnamon's gonna pop out, more mm -hmm. of those kind of things right. are gonna come out. I, I just love that whole ride. It's an evolution on the palate. It's yes. an evolution in the glass and on the palate. Oxidation does the same thing for me uh, in terms of uh, what's a whiskey gonna do for you in the first 30 seconds, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes per right. hour. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that. I like the dynamism and the, and the evolution of a whiskey like that on the palate. That's what this stuff is supposed to be. It's right. supposed to be a ride. It's supposed to be a sort of an adventure roller coaster ride. It's a journey, not a shot. Yeah, exactly mm -hmm. right. right. And it, you know, you, you're not. You, this is that's nearly. I haven't seen the shelf price, but it's got to be right around hundred dollars for a seven fifty of a non name statement single malt scotch whiskey. So there needs to be some kind of yeah. reinforced value uh, perception, and the value of it is its immense complexity in the palate. I think. So that was going to be one of my questions: Is what we could expect this to be? Probably ninety-five to one hundred, depending on where you're, where uh, what market you're buying in here in Texas. I'm guessing ninety-five to one hundred, which is usually what we aim for with the private editions. And what do you expect? When do you expect this to be on show? You should start to see this uh, in uh, in local retail. Uh, I expect to be uh, whoever's around here. Um, you're going to see this within the week. I would imagine well, okay. it's in the warehouse at the distributor now, so it's just more a matter of closing the circuit. Well, I just want to say one other thing, and that's that is 
that is a beautiful bottle. It really is. It's just so classy and awesome. Yeah. On this one. Just absolutely beautiful. We did the thing that they did in Edinburgh, the, the backdrop that was part of the good yeah. hang out of it. Mirrored the uh, the aesthetic of the box with all these kind of mm -hmm. these that was engraved noted. notes, which was really, really cool and well executed. Uh, I've been really happy with the visuals on this one. Is there a point during the year, because this is coming out right around 1st of February, is there a point during the year when you will let the cat out of the bag as to what Special Edition 10 will be? Yeah, you'll probably see some uh, accidental leaking of that information <laughs> right towards the end of this calendar year. Uh, if you've got the, your ear to the right uh, sort of uh, railroad tracks, you might start to hear some rumblings right around then. And then you'll start to see uh, more official press releases beginning in January. And then we'll, uh, you know, we'll kind of pretend like we didn't tell anybody before the launch, but we pretty much told everybody. <laughs> Uh, and actually, the really, the really nerdy folks will wait uh, until we submit for approval the label uh, to the U.S. government so, mm -hmm. that, so that we can ship it in. Uh, so that's the TTV approval site is usually where people get their first sense. And sometimes we throw some flack up there. Well, people watch some after these things. Yeah, and sometimes so we'll do that's big deep, labels. That's just a level into yeah. it. Yeah, right? I know. <laughs> I just wait for you to call me. Well, there's, <laughs> something there's, 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 well, there's, there's so much there, There's so much stuff on the shelf that I don't know, I haven't tried, that it's almost intimidating to even think about but when you know when you get a feel for what goes on behind the scenes in the creation of this it does make you really curious okay you can see how much passion these guys have for the product that they make mm. what is that going to be funneled into uh, for next year That's, i love the idea of the special edition to begin with just for that yeah. that's why it exists uh, <laughs> i mentioned when i was when i was asking questions to dr bill um i've known him for many years now and he has one of the most not notoriously unsettled curious minds in the industry so he's always looking for uh new inspirations and new ideas to try to to try to execute there's a real big what if fill in the blanks question mark that's sort of been indelibly printed on bill's mind so the prime editions exist for him to exercise that for yeah. him to go down a series of rabbit holes that he's not, then we're not going to ever repeat this again. Right. It's a single batch. Kind of. But shame. it does. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it, there is that. It scratches the itch of we can do some left to center things with this line that would be much riskier if we were trying to create a global permanent release from it. Mm -hmm. I do have to say one of the things that I picked up on watching the presentation was Dr. Bill, anytime he wasn't speaking uh, and he was just listening, uh, he had a tendency to start smelling mm -hmm. uh, his whiskey again. Just, well, just kind of like one flavor. nostril and then the next. You know, it was just, kind of, it was just a, a very interesting to watch. It's like, but you could just tell that that's the way his brain was sort of working. His natural curiosity for what he was experiencing in the uh, in the nose of this. Right. You know? One of the things he mentioned that sometimes we forget to mention on a show too when we're smelling. Um, when we do the sniffing of the, the drinks, the, whether it's mm -hmm. beer, whether it's whiskey, those kind of things. Um, and I always forget to mention, even though like I learned this a long time ago, it's nice to hear it again, but when you're doing that, you put that to your uh, nose, keep your mouth open. Right, right because it circulates. Because you, you know, yes, and, and those flavors start hitting your uh, your taste buds as mm -hmm. well, and they get all through your, your, you know, your full it, uh, it makes for a there. much richer mm -hmm. sort of uh, understanding of what the flavors are that you're saying. Yeah, you'll pick up much more scents, so you're, you're getting more senses in there, like you said. Right. And that's why it works on a, on a glass like this. You just put your nose there, yeah. yep. keep your mouth open, and quite frankly, it is almost as pleasurable as taking the drink. Almost. <laughs> almost. Yeah, uh, there, is, there is some difference, but it's, 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 not, it's not that much. Well, again, this is, uh, this is a wonderful uh, special edition. It really is. It plays to my taste buds and my palate just absolutely perfectly. Terrific. And I can't wait for this to hit the shelves. I can't wait for it to uh, uh, be something that I can try with a cigar. And uh, and it's also great to see you again. It's great to see you as you well. Know, when, when you asked when it was going to hit the shelves, my quick answer was going to be actually this afternoon if you can distract Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Your show. Oh, yeah. oh those shelves. <laughs> yeah. the, the retail stuff. Dan, have I shown show you the menu <laughs> here at the Federal yeah. American Here's Group. a shiny object. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, we, uh, uh, we just appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to be able to taste this and pass it on to people. And this is one we recommend highly. Well, we're, uh, we're always honored to be on the show and we appreciate the opportunity to, to display our new stuff uh, at Prime Edition 10. What we do for both Lamorge and Ardbeg, uh, we do a single 
annual release. The private edition, the next private edition uh, in the following year will usually be the beginning of February, and then the Art Big Day release you look for at the end of May or early June. So we have a date. Yes, so there we go. We do. I Two. believe we do. Indeed. And uh, by the way, if either of the boys from Scotland decide they want to oh, yes. uh, come to town, absolutely. We should uh, we should absolutely work out getting them on the show because we'd love to be able to that share them with our That'd audience. Be a lot of fun. Be a lot of fun. Have a ball with it. And I have a pair of enunciation. Yeah, well, and they're both cigar guys as well. So no, I had a feeling really just from the way they were talking. <laughs> I just had a feeling. So. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you uh, again, Dan, for being on Smoking and Toasting. My pleasure. Congratulations on this year's uh, special edition. I think uh, this may be one of your best, and uh, we will be looking for this on show. Yeah, wonderful time. departure from the norm. Too. Yes, yes indeed, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Smoking and Toasting, we'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back to Smoking and Toasting. So Dan Crowell is just—he's just awesome. What a what a gentleman. Yes, a gentleman and a scholar, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they still say that, but Dan uh, has a good head about whiskey. Yes, he does. And that Spio says we uh, talked about just just a fabulous fabulous new iteration of uh, Glen Morangy. Pause for sound effect. Yes, here we go. Are you ready? Oh, that's a delicious sound. Yes, that is a delicious sound. We've talked about founders uh, quite a bit on the show. We're both, uh, Ian and I, both uh, fans of what they do. Founders makes, I think, one of the best sessionable IPAs that's out there, which is the Founders All Day IPA. And uh, in addition to that, they make a pretty good porter, and they make uh, several other things that we've grown a bit fond of across our seventy four shows. If by pretty good porter you mean outstanding porter, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's I was you know, I was waiting for you to come back and uh, and, <laughs> and correct the, me there. Also, yeah. their breakfast stout. Is yes. Oh, that breakfast stout is terrific. Un. Yeah. No, no, it really is. Chocolate coffee. Coffee, oatmeal, stout. Like, what is in there that you wouldn't like? It did occur to me, though, that we had not tried their IPA. And I thought, well, that's uh, that's well, something. Well, we've done the all-day IPA. Right, but we had not tried their, different. their sort of standard centennial their IPA. Their centennial IPA. Yeah, and so I find that. Uh, let me find uh, where I saw this. Oh, uh, on the back it says, get ready to bask in the glory of the frothy heart's Floral, I have trouble reading some of this print because it's so small. Floral bouquet. Um, well, let me just say this: it's uh, <clears throat> it's seven point two percent. So I, I love that. Yeah. So that's that's, that's right up my. It's got that going for it. So <laughs> right up my alley. Yeah. So you know what's, so uh, this is very very good on the. So nose. this one I could compare a bit to the Dogfish Head ninety minute, which mm-hmm. is one of my favorites because. This one has a malt presence to it that a lot of IPAs don't. Right. That they it, that they leave out or mask with the hop factor. It is it is definitely hoppy. Oh, it's definitely it's hoppy. Got, it's got okay. the the good dose of hops. The but. interesting thing between this one and the one before is that mm-hmm. the one before actually smelled hoppier. The shiny diamonds that, ale. The bright yes. Those like there's a bright hoppy notes right. um, in that. This one doesn't smell quite as hoppy. No, the not on the nose. Note you... on the on the. It's right in the middle of the flavor too. It's not mm-hmm. even a. It's not even a trailing finish of hops. You on get a one. little bit of the malt actually it's, on the nose. There's definitely yeah. malt on the nose. The malt hits your flavor, hits your palate right up front, rolls right through the middle. The hops comes in, and then when it follows through on the end, it leaves you with this malty, delicious. Crisp hopness. That is a really good IPA. Is what that is. Look what it just made me say. Yes, like, I know. That was a lot of syllables I put together. <laughs> I was together. very actually impressed with what you just uh, <laughs> with what you just said. So just put all that together. Um, that was off the top of my head, people. Couple of a uh, couple of quick notes from the cigar world. Uh, STG Scandinavian Tobacco Group is acquiring Thompson Cigars, one of the mail or- one of the big mail order companies. I think they're the number three mail order company behind JR and uh, CI. Uh, but Thompson has just been acquired for sixty-two million dollars. Wow! Yeah, that's that's a lot of that's a lot of tobacco. That's more millions <laughs> than I have. Yeah, that is definitely it. Uh, the deal is expected to close by the end of March, and of course, uh, STG is a Danish company, Scandinavian Tobacco Group. So that's pretty interesting. As as more and more of the tobacco in the world is being owned and controlled by groups from just 
places you wouldn't expect to have that much of an interest in tobacco. In, the, in other words, it's not from the tobacco producing regions. Right. Is what I'm, is what I'm getting at. But uh, hey, maybe the Scandinavians enjoy a good smoke now and then. Who knows? Uh, also, speaking of uh, areas and territories where cigars and, and tobacco are put together, Carlos uh, Fuente Jr., the owner of Arturo Fuente Cigars, made a surprise visit to Esteli, Nicaragua, to reveal his plans to build a new cigar factory there. Oh, nice. Uh, of course, um, Arturo Fuente, really world-renowned for their Dominican-made cigars, like the Arturo Fuente Don Carlos and the Opus X, uh, and uh, they are back uh, Fuente Jr. said, in Nicaragua. Uh, and they owned a successful cigar factory there until that com- co- country was torn apart by political upheaval and the factory was destroyed in 1979. So it is a return to Nicaragua. Hmm. But it is, uh, it's very interesting to see that happening. I think it's part of this just overall general surge in Nicaragua. And some, well, some people are going to not like that I say this. As the number one place... For good tobacco for cigars. Well, I gotta wonder, and and somebody out there, please uh, clue me in on this if you know better than I do. I gotta wonder if Nicaragua is coming up as one of the premier tobacco uh, places for cigars, due to uh, seeds that were planted or the way the uh, the uh, the soil is treated, and sometimes those things take a while. Right. Or is there something new that's come into Nicaragua that's just created? this all i know is that of the cuban cigars that i've had in the last couple of years i can't think of any of them that i would put i'll put some of them maybe even with but not necessarily better than the best of the nicaraguan cigars that i've had and i know that's sacrilege to some people to say that because cuba's cuba you know and it's supposed to be but there's as we've talked about this on the show before there's been so many quality control issues maybe i'm just not getting the right cuban cigars but the last uh, last cuban cigar i had was uh monte cristo number two cuban monte cristo it was quite good but i don't know that i liked it better than some of the outstanding Nicaraguan You're, you're that saying I've had. something that has happened also in the beer industry, right? Over over uh, the last bunch of years, because until not even that many years ago, people would say, "Well, if you wanted good beer, you had to go to Germany." You know what? Germans go to the U.S. for good beer now. Well, too. yeah. Look at look at there all is the, more styles, mm-hmm. more beer made in the U.S. now, and and the U.S. is the like like. It's the flat the, out leader. the gold yeah. standard. Yeah, absolutely. For let's try new styles. Let's try all these different things. Let's just make beer. You now know? let me ask you this: When you think of good beer, do you ever think of Scotland? You know, I don't think of Scotland for for Although beer. Although Scottish ale is fantastic. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. wrong. There's nothing wrong with the beer, but it's not. It's not my go-to. It doesn't come into my right. head when I think but, Scotland beer. I think you know. Well, we're going to try Scotland. something interesting today. It's and I'm. I know I'm butchering this, so I pri- uh, I apologize in advance. But it's the Harvey Astune Brewery. They have a, a small photo of a mouse. I don't know if you can see it uh, or a small drawing of a mouse there Harvestoon. on the label. Harvestoon. It's spelled H-A-R-V-I-E-S-T-O-U-N. And I'm sure that that word sounds completely awesome when you pronounce it with the proper Swedish, uh, proper uh, Scottish okay. accent. <laughs> sounds, uh, sounds way cooler than what yeah, you just did. Absolutely. It. But this is an ale that's been matured in Highland Park whiskey casks. Highland Park is a 12 year old single malt. Oh, Highland Park's and, delicious. Uh, so, guess what? This is, I mean, this is one of those bottles that has a, uh, not only a bottle on date stamped on it, but also has the signatures of the head brewer. And the master of wood. So uh, I just I just pulled this up on uh, what am I on Beer Advocate here, mm-hmm. right? Um, at Ola Dub uh, Special Reserve Twelve mm-hmm. Harvestoon Brewery um, Ltd. Do they seem to like it? Uh, Four point one out of five. That's pretty high. It's not bad. I think that's pretty good, right? Uh, it's an exceptional beer, is what they call that. Uh, from Scotland uh, and United Kingdom, harvestune.com, blah, blah, blah. Old ale. You couldn't have brought a beer that's more up my alley than this. Well, this is an old ale at 8%. We'll see the prerequisite sound effect. That is, is. a little bit on the... Uh, that was nice. I like the little a, scrunchy uh, uh, But that's from the scrunchy foil yeah. that's around the top of it. The <laughs> that, was, that was good. Yes. You captured that pretty All well. Right. This, is, gonna be um, this is an old ale, and it's at 8%, which is a little low on the side of the percentage that I generally like. Right. That's a right. joke. But <laughs> um, <laughs> A little, little bit of a joke. Okay, well, maybe it's not a joke. 
So uh, Ol- Oladub is stands for black oil, and is black named oil. so because of its. Uh, and, and and this is me quoting Beer Advocate here. It's gloopy and viscous. Uh, nature. Well, let me just point out to the camera right now this <laughs> gloopy and viscous black oil. That's exactly what this is, as I learned my left from right. Uh, it's <laughs> exactly much. what this is. I mean, it honestly looks like motor oil. We've made that, that joke that before. That pretty much looks. But it honestly looks like, like motor oil. Motor oil. It really does. It really does. It looks so like motor gonna, oil, but at least it smells like whiskey. Yeah, <laughs> because of the. I, I would imagine that if you matured motor oil in the Highland Park whiskey casks, you would get a like similar. Whiskey, yeah. It would smell more, more, smell more <laughs> like whiskey. Well, you are right. On the nose. Tell me what you think of this. On the nose, it's like. Oh my goodness! This is this beer is so up your alley, Ian. Uh, this is I'm not even I, I don't even have to taste it to know that this is going to be something. The mouthfeel on this right beer is go. somewhere between motor oil and oatmeal. It is not. I will point out, <laughs> it is not as one beer Ian brought to the show before. It is not chunky, and that's I think an important designation. But it is very. The viscosity is a, high. That harvest tale really, oh my really God. stuck I'll, in your brain. I'll it? never forget it, Ian. That was just <laughs> that was just a moment. I was like, I am literally you talk about sometimes you might you know, describe something as being chewy. <laughs> no, it was you literally actually chew it, right? chewy. There were actual nuggets of something I, in there. I, I do remember we have that. That was at B and B, I think, that mm-hmm. day. And um mm. and I think the look on your face was absolutely priceless when I so, went then. This reminds me of a really good I realize it's an ale, but it reminds me of a the the taste on the front is like a really good porter that's been maybe matured in whiskey cask, but then the finish is totally ale. So totally on the finish of this, I want you to take a sip of that. I want you to think about a couple mm-hmm. of things while you, while you uh, take a sip of that. The first thing is coffee. Mm-hmm. Coffee happens. Now, when you take that, when you swallow, I want you to think the malt... And the bitter chocolate that happens oh, at the totally, very end of that. Totally. Mixing with that coffee totally finish. Totally get that bitter chocolate. And yep. then a little bit at the very end, like even after all that happens, there's a little bit of, that comes right back at you. It's a little toffee right yes. there and then, like almost a caramel. First, at, right after you swallow, you get the baker's chocolate. Yep. And then after a few moments, that caramel, almost like a roasted a caramel taste. Yeah, roasted uh, caramel. Taste. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I don't know if I've ever described a beer like that. You know what I mean? I don't know if I've ever used those stellar. words. But the funniest to thing about it is too is is the finish on this doesn't last as long as you'd think. Even after no. all the interesting stuff that we just talked about, the finish is actually quicker. And one of the things, despite the viscosity, it's actually more drinkable than we probably made it sound. In terms of like, you can take a drink of this and go, yeah, I'll have some more. Like it, it doesn't. It doesn't make you go, whoa, I just ate a half a cake. <laughs> so that was you a know bite I mean? of a biscuit there? Because, well, because there, some, of the, some of the heavier beers and this, this type of beer. This beer has the mouthfeel of biscotti. Really? Well, yeah, it makes you feel like you've just had a pastry. You know what I mean? Uh, and and this, one, this one, not so much. Like, like you, you swallow it and you think, I'll have another drink. Like, that's, that's well, a, a very. That's, that's because it finishes fast and with that little chocolate kind of bitter mm-hmm. sweetness, it's mm-hmm. really nice. And that mm. that little bitterness in that chocolate is from the hops that they finish that mm. with. It's that fantastic uh, balance on that. I don't know how they achieved the kind of balance because that to me is is for for a dark. I mean, and listen, there are so many. You can you can scan the shelves if you go to like Specs and just stand there and scan the shelves. And there's so many beers now, particularly in the bombers. That are finished in whiskey casks or rum casks or this or that or and you're like okay obviously this has become a trend and they'll do a small batch and they'll finish it in those but I don't know of any of them that are quite as drinkable as this is. I would also like to point out you can almost guarantee I'm gonna like and appreciate a beer if you describe it with the word viscosity. Yeah, I, well, that's the thing between you and me, you know. But but for all the viscosity, viscosity. Uh, it, it, it drinks wonderfully. Uh, so let me just throw this last thing in here. According to Beer Connoisseur, the website, the best beer in America. Now, this is a, this the best is a beer lofty, in America. This is a lofty statement because think about, think about this. You and I have tasted lots of great beers. And... Yet it's really difficult to single one out and go, that's the best beer in America. I realize I've probably said that about Lone Pint Yellow Rose, but that's just 
I'm really talking about my taste buds. Like for me, that's number one for my palate. But to say definitively, this is the best beer in America. I mean that that requires some cojones. You know what I mean? I agree. What would you if you had the, to, if you had to what's say the would qualifier you, would you, on that? Like it just has to be the absolute best beer in America. Like that's a tough one because there's so many styles. Right. Well, according to Beer Connoisseur, it's Cape May Brewing Company's The Top Sale. The Sour Blonde Ale from the brewery's Barrel Aid series was number one on the magazine's top 100 rated beers of 2017. And the brewery, which is located at Cape May Airport in Lower Township, was second runner-up as the nation's best brewery in America. Uh, They say this about the beer. They say the aroma is inviting with lots of ripe pineapple, green mangoes, red apples, ripe pear, and light citrus fruit. And this is from Judge Dan Martik, talking about the top sale. He said the beer drinks more like a 4% beer in that it's very light, which is a difficult task given that the actual ABV is 9.9%. Wow. So you and I will be looking for some top sale, my friend. If you have top sale. Yeah, if you have top sale or know how to get it, please let us know. Yes, please. That is our appeal to you. Let us on the comments. Email us. Yes, and you can you can find this radio program all over the place. We're available at uh, Google Play. We're available on uh, Apple in the uh, iTunes podcast area. And we are also available on YouTube as well as uh, Facebook. You, you can watch us on Facebook Live or you can go back and view the show later on Facebook Live. Big thanks to Dan Crowell of Glenn Morangy. And, uh, and man, I, I can't say enough about the Spios. Spios. I love this this is this is I'm an, for it. it's a new fave i'm i'm very very happy to have discovered this so and i can't say enough about you guys thank you so much for uh getting us to episode number 75 which will happen next week ian it's been a pleasure it's nice to have you back on the program uh i missed you while you were gone and uh i will uh i will just raise my cup and you can raise your red solo the cup red solo i'm protest. talking to you solo yeah uh and say folks we love you and thank you cheers we're out Thank you, Facebook. Thank you, Facebook Live. You rock the planet. Adam, did I?